Israel, congratulations on a, another victory, a, a defense of the belt, but you didn't seem necessarily completely satisfied at the close of the fight. So I guess, how are you feeling right now about your performance? A lot better, a lot better, because, um, yeah, I've said this before in the past, on my worst day, I can kill the best man. I call that suicide. Uh, so on my worst day on the off night, I had an off night tonight. So Eugene told me, you know, the people who really know you, my teammates, my family, they know you had an off night. And still, I still fucked them up. When did you know you were having an off night? Like, was there anything during the day that you thought it's not feeling right? No, or on the way no, to the no. Game? It was in the fight, maybe when I couldn't find my power, like, like my, my power shots, my, my kicks. The initiators, the jabs, the leg kicks were working, but I was trying to find the power shots, but he was adjusting well. It wasn't just me versus him. It was his team versus my team, which is what I was, I was also looking forward to. So I told John Crouch, like, I was looking forward to that, the battle of the game plans. It's the helicopter. And yeah, so I was just looking forward to John Crouch versus Eugene Behrman. And they were adjusting well each round. I could hear them even talking what they were saying. I was like, okay. Um, but yeah, he's a formidable fighter. I've called this ages ago and showed it tonight. Like you said, you were looking forward to this fight for a long time. So I guess what did surprise you in there tonight? You know, you praised his game plan. What played out differently than you thought it would? Um, what played out differently? Yeah, his adjustments. His adjustments to what I was doing. Because I'd go ahead, um, I'd go to his body, I'd go to his legs. I'm just going to keep going. Um, I'd go to his legs and he'd adjust and get away from my power. But I was able to get away from his as well. It's still a win, it's still a title defense, but yeah, there were some, you know. Six title defense on my worst night, and still. There were boos at the end, you know, I'm just Fuck curious, them. does that affect you at all? Uh, they all, they've been here since 3 p.m., they're all drunk. They don't know what real fighting is or real, real finesse. And I've said this, look, the greats, they all get to this point. I've seen it when I was just a fan, still a fan. Anderson Silva, GSP, I remember fights with would be like, that was a fucking fantastic fight. And the same thing, people would just boo them. GSP, one of the fucking goats, and people would just boo him. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys watching? You dumb fucks. Ali, Floyd Mayweather, same thing. You get to this point where it's like, you're so great, people just want to see you fall. You know? They just want to see you fall, no matter what. And if it's not like a show out spectacular performance, then it's like, ah, he's not even that good. But trust, like, Jared knows I'm a good fighter. He knows I'm a great fighter, and I gave him the same credit as well. Last thing for me, uh, you know, you've been saying Alex Bejeda, that's the next fight. I guess, did you see his performance tonight? What'd you think about it? And I guess, how soon do you think you'd like to line up that fight if, if that is indeed the next one? That's the next fight. I saw his fight. Um, it was a good fight, uh, but Sean Strickland should have focused on his job like I told him to. Uh, soon, how soon? We'll find out. Is he? You know, people are saying, I'm oh, criticizing you for your fighting style, but at the end of the day, it seems like your opponents get in there and kind of freeze up in front of you. I'm curious, what do you think makes them do that? Is it the, the sense of scale of the, the fight itself? Is it your movement? What exactly makes these guys sort of slow down in front of you? A mixture of all. I felt like the moment got to him, but he picked himself back up. I'll give it to him. He adjusted and picked his energy back up. And um, I feel like the moment, um, the, the moment and the skills, I feel that's what gets to them. And I said, this is an acquired taste to be under the spotlight. I can thrive under this bitch. I don't melt under the spotlight, I shine. So yeah, I feel like it's a combination of everything. You said that you described this as an off night though, and you've always said like, how you think Jared's a good, good challenger for you. So when you can beat him, even though you're having an off night, does that give you confidence going forward, thinking like, well, even if I have an off night, I can still win? <laughs> it's emotional, I know. You're good, Oscar. That's why I like you. Ah. Well, thank you, Dad. Thanks, Dad. Um, uh, was, uh, let me see. Gives me confidence. Going forward, yeah, I like, I like the story. Like I've said this, this is my, my life is a movie. My life is an anime. Whatever. Like, this is, I'm facing a guy who's beat me in kickboxing. And now he's still chasing me because he knows I'm the king and he wants to try and get that away from me. You guys see what happens when my, when my back's against the wall, when I really have that pressure. Or I put pressure on myself, but when I have pe pressure put on me as well. So yeah, I look forward to fighting him in that next fight. How soon, we'll find out. 
I need a bourbon and a, you know, maybe a couple of shots, and uh, I'll see how I'm feeling first. Israel, Israel just right going here. off. Of Sorry. Yeah, you go. Oh, Sorry. You go. Just, just going yeah, off. Of, just going off of that. You said you know that gives you pressure, knowing that you're going to be going up against Alex next, and given your history. But does that give you that kind of fire? You know, being a champion, defending your belt for so many times. Do you need that kind of extra fire to kind of keep you hungry as a champion? No, no, really. I was very hungry for this fight. I felt like this camp. You can ask Eugene. This camp was great. Um, even better than the last camp because he asked me at the beginning of this camp how are you going to make it better than the last one but I don't feel like I need it I'm just taking you know tick 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 six title defenses and still on my worst night so the next one it's something interesting for me someone I fought before in a different code and I get to show him what MMA is about what mixed martial arts is about and of course you had a lot of respect for Jared going to going into this one yeah what was the conversation like between you two you know after the fight we saw you both kind of um what did I, I said like we're just showing respect like we're two fighters and showing respect because we're both on here trying to put food on the table um set our families up um yeah and i just said you know i didn't like the speech of him saying oh i was broke you know after one of his fights his recent fights and i was like i hope your management got you sorted for this fight I hope they push for more money for him for this fight. Like I said, you guys are asking me, what am I doing for these fighters for fighter pay and whatnot? I'm giving people opportunities. You know, I'm giving people opportunities to raise their, their pay, raise the bar. And also, yeah, so it was just me and him showing appreciation and yeah, that was it. And then just final one from me, John Jones came out on Twitter. Fuck John Jones, <laughs> fuck John, I don't wanna hear about that bitch. What are you gonna talk about my nails for? He's just jealous and insecure, he's a fuck boy. He could never rock shit like this, he's a bitch. And also he said that he was back in... Fuck him, I don't really give a fuck what he thinks. Yeah, next. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have to ask you about your entrance. Uh, I was obviously with The Undertaker, Earn, The Hat, The, the, the Music. How did you get all, all that approved? And I know you said it was a, you were feeling dark all week, so was that just the theme? It just works. I don't know, I, like, the theme for me. This is, I'm an artist. It just works. I didn't plan on Vince and the Triple H and then being here. On Tuesday, I was chilling. Might have just... Okay, so Wednesday nights when we wrestle, Towards the end of the rounds, 12 rounds, towards the end, the last three or four rounds, I'll chalk on my playlist from YouTube, WWE Attitude, from the Attitude Era. I have like 20 different tracks from, from superstars I admire. And that will get me in that zone. And the Undertaker's theme was one of them. So as I was sitting down feeling it on Tuesday, it just made sense. And also big shout out to the WWE, uh, I'm sorry, big shout out to the, the UFC production team because they were really accommodating um, and just helpful to make it a show. This is the, this is the UFC, you wanna give them a show, you know what I mean? So, and I, I said all week, this feels like WrestleMania. Who's undefeated at WrestleMania? The Undertaker. And I've been feeling dark all week, so you saw hints of the death note, the speech from Madara in the beginning, and then you saw the scream at the end and the split face with me and Madara, the purple. Fuck, it just makes sense, Susano, all that. How hands on were you? in that creation very right? hands-on i'm very hands-on with my freestyle bender team shout out to luca stay hydrated jeff st Lair and david blackamoto the greatest reporter in the history of the of the mma and um yeah i was very hands-on i felt like a producer today when i was at um when i was at the arena uh so i was speaking who's that was jimmy fuck excuse me if i forgot his name i think it was jimmy i was talking to him and just walked through and then having a look on the screen seeing what it looked like from tv seeing what it looked like in the arena and they were so accommodating which was really cool and i appreciate that because again i like to put on the show i like to entertain and i did just that what's, your favorite, what's your favorite undertaker match oh fuck him and Mick Foley is the first one that comes to mind, and I think Mick Foley might have broken his neck. Hell in the cell. Oh, hell in the cell. Off, off the top row. That's that's the first one. He that came jumped to off the stretch at a run back. Yeah. Oh, fucking crazy, man. Good times. Is it? Um, you you had talked about giving paydays for other fighters and in helping them improve their situation. But what about for yourself? Because you know now you set yourself up to fight Alex, and the drama that's going to come. Hey, I'm is telling he you, I said Sean or Alex is big money fights. Yeah. They either big money fights. And yeah, I look forward to this one. And my boy Timbo, he knows what's going on. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna work. And me and the UFC, we have a good relationship. I like, I like working with them. And you know, 
I've said this already, rising tides lifts all the ships, but Rome wasn't built in a day. So it's a step-by-step -step process. And I have a nice jet after the fight. I told him, I was like, you know, and he's like, yeah, I got looked after. I was like, good. And he's gonna keep that going. There's management company, if they're smart, they'll keep pushing because he's a great fighter. He, I, I'm saying he's a good fighter, but he's a great fighter and, and, a, and a cool dude as well. Is there pressure on you in a night like this because you're a five to one favorite or better than a five to one favorite to win and you know you've got this Pajeda fight coming up that will be your big, big, you know, performance, your big night. Does that put a, a little more pressure on you when everybody's expecting you to blow him out? Um, no, not really. I wasn't focused on the odds. I didn't even know what the odds say. Oh, shout out to Drizzy. I hope, I don't know what he won, but um, yeah, what fucking curse. You guys are, oh, not you guys, but anyone who's so stupid, so stupid, stupid. I don't post shit, but like, was it the Vittori fight? Me and Drizzy was going back and forth, fight week, talking. And after the fight, was going back and forth in the DMs, talking as well. So I don't know, people, what curse? And also the green shorts, another curse. I've broken all the curses. I've broken, what's on the, the Drake curse now? So stupid, I've broken the shorts curse because apparently I changed my shorts from black and gold. Um, EA cover curse, I've broken that. Embedded haircut curse. Whatever fucking more curse. You're so stupid, you fuck. Sometimes, all of you online, I just sometimes, I, as soon as that video came out, all the comments were just curse, curse, curse. And I feel like, they don't even believe it. They just say that to try and get likes. To try and get like the, 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 the thumbs ups because they're doing it for likes. But yeah, I just remember. So shout out to Drake for betting a million on me. And yeah, I'll see you on over your weekend. Hi, Izzy, over here to your right. Uh, Duke Gronkle told uh, MMA Junkie that I'm the only one that could beat Israel Adesanya. Uh, what do you ha what's your response to that? Everyone thinks that. Uh, Follow-up question, uh, how are you gonna, are you gonna be celebrating with Volkanovski tonight? Fuck yeah, oh, shout out to my guy, Alexander Volkanovski. Just inspiring, fucking inspiring. Like I had a five nil shutout, but his was way, way cooler and more impressive. You know, like I said, I had an off night, but he was fucking on. Ooh, and when he's on, he's on from the first round. He started talking to Max. Also, I've said, shout out to Max Holloway. I'm a big fan. The guy's a cool dude, man. He's, I've seen him around all week. He's, he and his team are always really respectful, you know, but this is what we do. We go to war and afterwards we show respect. So it's my team against his team. But when it was when it was in there and it was going down, even yesterday at the Wayans when they were like barking, you know, I am the heat. I was just like, yeah, I, I held the line with Alex back there. I was holding the line. But again, we're different, and Alex is fucking different, bro. You guys don't understand. He inspires me the way he fucking works. When he came over to CKB this this camp, I knew the bar was gonna get raised, and he fucking raised the bar, man. Fucking beautiful. Ugh, beautiful. Izzy, uh, when you say you had right here, when you say you had an off night, like how? When do you know that that's happening? Is it you know something that you knew before you even got in the cage? Is it is it something? No, not before the. I mean, it was probably fourth round, but I, I wasn't something I like dwelled on. Like, oh, I'm having an off night. Afterwards, I look at the performance from my first person perspective, and I'm like, eh, I have an off night. And Eugene was the first one to tell me because they know. When you know your people, oh, excuse me, hiccups. Water, please. Sorry. Um, off night, off night. Yeah. So my people who actually know me and love me train with me they know what i can do when i'm on they see it but again like i said i can kill the best man on my worst day and i don't know if you've had your shower yet or you kind of deep nah i'll do that after the club i got obligations to do uh, i'd rather just go to bed but you know they're gonna pay me lots of money to go drink and party so i gotta go do that <laughs> fucking hell this is such a drain vegas Ugh. Uh, so what, I mean, I know you can't think with, I know what's going to happen when you get in there and start thinking, but can you think right now what maybe the biggest positive you'll take away from this fight will be? I'm just grateful. I, like I said all week, I felt so much love, so much love. There was a point this week, I got a little emotional at the PI because I, I, upstairs I looked around and there was a CKB class upstairs at the PI and, you know, uh... Give me a second. Like my brother, you know, 
we've talked about this. I don't, I don't like to harp on about it, like for you guys, because not for this, but I'm harping on about it because there's injustice. The guy who killed Falvake, he's getting 18 months and he's gonna be out earlier than that. So it's like, what the fuck? But there was a moment I had when I was looking around the class and seeing everyone just like training from my team. There was a lot of Kiwis and a bunch of Aussies as well. And I just felt emotional and I just ran to the back of the, the PI and I just kind of had a you know, moment to myself because I, I wished he was here just doing this shit with us. But I know he's looking down on us, you know, inspired. And I know he's looking down on us, protecting us along with VDK, Monu, Praveen, Patsy, um, you know, Wilman. And yeah, it's just one of those things that for me, just being surrounded by my team, I just felt so loved this week. I felt so much love at the house we were at. I felt so much, just, just minor, the spirit. And then as the fight got closer, you know, our spot became a fortress for battle. And then, yeah, fuck, I just, I, I feel good. I feel, but at the same time, yeah, I just love my team, man. I love my team. I appreciate that insight. And last thing from me, uh, when Alex was in here earlier, he said, when you guys fight, I'm going to make him fight. The um, fact that he's already, you know, thinking that he wants to, you know, make it exciting or whatever his mindset is there, is that already kind of a win for you in a way that maybe he might try to fight outside of himself a bit? <laughs> like I said, at the top, um, it's nice at the top. It's nice at the top. So whatever he feels he needs to do to make me fight, I fought tonight. I fought my ass off tonight. Um, yeah, I didn't feel like I was chilling or I was waiting I was pressing the action I was making I was going for it I was touching them up but I like I said I was just critical because I couldn't get my my, my power stuff going I couldn't get the change-ups going but he's a formidable opponent you can't sleep on this guy because he'll sleep you and I'm not here to fucking you know risk my health risk my brain and I do that but I'm not gonna do it stupidly just for the entertainment of some grongos some drunk folks is the earlier you talked about the moment uh, with with Jared, and I was wondering at the press conference, his his answers were kind of rambling a little bit. It sounded like he was nervous, and you said, "Hey, man, just keep it short and sweet." Yeah. Like, did did you kind of sense in that moment, like he was was starting to get to him a little? I could feel it from from that moment, the moment after that, with the stare down when I shook his hand, um, and at the weigh-ins as well. Like I was like, okay, he's not ready for this. But like I said, he picked himself up. He's, he's a mature guy, I said, so I was like, he, he picked himself up later on in the, in the fight. I, I don't know what round, but I saw him right before the round, and he picked himself up with his breath, and I was like, huh. So I'm sure he does a lot of breath work as well, and um, yeah, he did what he had to do. And then the last thing for me is, you, you mentioned the nails earlier. Did, was there anything from the commission? Like, they're they, just like, pretty. They don't, they're not sharp. They're drip tips. They're not even, they call them French tips, apparently, but they're not even made in France, so I call them drip tips. And my toes, they're kind of sparkly, uh, black and sparkles. I like them. Um, I don't know why fucking men are so insecure about what the fuck I wear. No, sorry, I'm not. I'm, I'm not, not you guys. Not, not, not you guys. I'm not, I know, no, no, my bad. I didn't mean to come I, to you. I, 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 no, I just wondered, like, if the commission was looking and they were like, "Oh, what's going on?" Like, there, there was no. Yeah, a little bit, but they, they check and kind of. I see the look on their face. They pause, and I'm just like, "It's not that long. It's an illusion. It's just pretty. That's all I tell them. It's not that long. It's just pretty." Is you in the middle here? Israel down here, it's your, it's your left. When you, when you made your walk uh, with the Undertaker's theme, did you know that Vince and all them were actually- I found out like this morning, but it wasn't a thing I planned. Like I said, the universe just provides and it's a weird synergy, weird crossover, but I like it because I grew up on that shit. Did you get a chance to talk to them or see them backstage? No, the I haven't talked to them, it'd be cool. I mean, I'm a big fan of Triple H. He just retired or became a Hall of Famer, which is cool. Um, yeah, he's a superstar as well, a legend in the game. So it's just cool to see guys like that. Um, yeah, but I hope they enjoy the show. Um, yeah, I had an off night, but still, 5-0. It's crazy, isn't it? Alice won tonight, you won tonight. Kai is fighting in, in a few weeks. Could be, you know, three champions from City Kickboxing. Crazy. In, you know, and fighting. with no government funding as well, no government backing, like the national rugby or netball team or cricket team or national football team. And yet here we are, this little old island in the, in the little spot in the world, three champions in the, in the biggest combat sports league on the fucking planet right now. How amazing is that? You know who we have? The people, the people of New Zealand. They're the ones that back us and we back ourselves. It, it's been a rough 
few years for you guys too. Yeah, with the fucking yeah. quarantine, pandemic, and the pan- and your all that stuff, and then they gaslighting us as well. Oh, we're not blocking you guys. Meanwhile, they're letting the Indian cricket team into the country and letting them quarantine, letting the the, the All Blacks quarantine in their own little bubble. But then they come to our bubble and break us up, hunting Dan down Dan. You know, while he's he, he's getting ready for his fight, you know, threatening to arrest him for what? For fucking training. You know, and then they're gaslighting us. So yeah, I, I don't do this for them anyway. They're the fucking bureaucrats. Fuck them. I do this for the people, the people of the of the country, the people who support us as, a, as as fighters. You know, that's who I do it for, and the people around the world who support me as well, regardless of nationality or wherever the fuck you come from. If you fuck with me, I fuck with you and I appreciate you. What does it say about your team that you were able to you know overcome all that stuff and possibly have three champions in the UFC in a few, in a few weeks? The mana, the aroha in our team is just unmatched. It's on Matt. John Anna keeps saying we're his favorite team in sports. And I, I keep thinking he's, he's like just g me up, but I'm my favorite team in sports. So, yeah. Um, and I believe him. Don't get me wrong. I believe him. And I appreciate that. But, yeah, I love my team, man. Like I said, I, I just love my team. And I love the, the support I get from my team. And, and, the, and just we know us. We, we got us. That's it. Thanks, man. Here's in the middle. The Drake curse was broken in 2017. What fucking curse? I exactly. broke that shit last year. It was broken okay, in let me, uh, let me go. You know what? I'm going to post it on Twitter. Let me do it right now, actually. Let me do it right now. I'm going to do something real quick. Hold up, hold up. Actually, I'll do it after just because I want to I wanna get this over with. I'll do it after. I was going to say, it was broken in 2017 with the Warriors, allegedly. But he is 0-2 in big MMA bets recently. How good does it feel to get the win for him? And to answer your question, he won approximately, depending on when he made the bet, around 250K. Nice. Um, it feels good for me to get the win, but also myself, um, anyone else that bet on me, it feels good. And it feels good. First of all, it, it, even like, like I said, I've been talking to him for a while now, like since last year. So I already broke the curse. But to, to get that call from him while I was cutting weight and then to be like, you guys, you have an album. I don't know what you listen to, whatever you have on repeat sometimes or a track you have on repeat. This guy, is, his, his, his albums are like, there's three of them that are like timestamps for my life. Like moments in my life where I'm like, if I hear that track or that album, I'm like, I remember where I was at in, the, in, in my life at that stage. And music is powerful. Music is something that brings people together, that evokes emotion out of people. So for me to get that kind of praise and recognition and love from an artist that I admire like that, one of my favorite artists of all time, it's cool. It's cool to be recognized like that by him. And it goes deeper. I can't tell you too much because the guy, is, he's crazy, bro. He's too nice, too, too, too cool. He's too cool. And I appreciate him. So, yeah, shout out to Drake. He's the, he's the, the sixth god. And as a Toronto kid, do you have a top three favorite for Drake songs? Man, why you got to do this to me? Right now, uh, fuck, why you got to do this to me? Well, I mean, he did say, it was, fuck, what did he say? He said, I've never walked anyone out. And then I was asking Tim, I was like, what would you walk out to? I'm thinking, Lord knows, as one of them. That's just straight bar for bar for bar, and then Rick Ross kills it at the end. Um, I love Yeba's Heartbreak. I had that on repeat in my studio <laughs> last year, because <laughs> it was just the track that kind of like, the song, it was so soulful, so fucking soulful. And there's an unreleased one, actually. I don't know if, uh, if he actually got it, but my boy, Frano, who's a music producer from New Zealand, he, um, he, he gave me a little preview, and I, I love I love hearing that track. I don't want to give it away, but that's probably my favorite track. It's, a, it's yeah, it's cool. I never posted enough. I'm not a clout trout. Trust, I don't do this shit for likes. I just do this shit because I love it. But yeah, it's cool. Like I said, to be recognized by people like that because you admire them, and yeah, you know, blah 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 blah. blah. Thanks, Susie. Congrats. No worries. Yeah. Last question. Let's go. I got some bourbon to drink. <laughs> You hear Mark Jared very early on as someone who was going to make it towards a title fight. Clearly, you're sort of looking many moves ahead and looking at the field and seeing who's coming up. I just wondered, who's next? Who's going to break from the pack that you've kind of earmarked as someone who's moving their way up and could potentially face you further down the line? Mm. That's a good question, but I don't want to give away the answer. That's a good question. I appreciate that, but I don't want to give away the answer because there's a lot of killers right now coming up in middleweight as well. I see a couple of them and I'm like, okay, all right. Let's see what you have. Let's see what you bring. But um, yeah, I'm watching. I'm steady watching. And yeah, my people are watching as well. So they let me know if I miss something. So man, thank you. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, just, just, just something I want to say. You guys have a job to do, and I'm not criticizing you guys in particular. I kind of am. I kind of am. But just remember this. I can do your job. I can do your job. You can never do my job. Just remember that. I can do your job. Trust me. I got a freestyle bender. David runs that shit. But if I wanted to, if I had the time, I could. And I appreciate you guys for what you do. But not just for me, but for other fighters, man. Be mindful with your words. Be mindful with the way you, you clickbait. That shit is weak. That shit is weak. Because I know how YouTube works now. And I know how these interviews work. I'm glad I have my own network. But just be mindful. Because I can do your job, but you can't do mine. Just remember that. Thank you.